the teacher told me to write my name and I wrote down Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, whole class was starting laughing because I didn't know how to write my Chinese name. And from that point on, my nickname became Atoa. Saturday at 2 p.m. the mm. shop is closed and Sunday they don't even open. Mm. It mm. sounds like end of the world for Taiwanese. Hello everyone, Amadeus here and I'm today with a new video. Very often what I'm hearing is, you know, foreigners come to Taiwan, they love Taiwan because they are from outside and they don't have problems here, the life is easy for them. But when it comes to Taiwanese, they say they have to stay here, they have no other options, so they kind of not so happy. But I think it's actually not true because you actually have options and I know lots of stories of people who go abroad or even they are born abroad even their parents like one two generations before they move to other country and the kids want to come back here or live here today I want to share an inspiring story of Joseph who actually been to state but in the end he decided to move to Taiwan so let's say hello to Joseph hey Amity okay and I actually I've been to the states when I was very very young okay and now was from 6 to 12 years old okay and when I Moved back to Taiwan, it was 12 years old. I started to learn Bupomofo. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was a really <laughs> hard transition. And at that time, I actually had an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was figuring out whether I was a Taiwanese person or an American person. Because of that, when I was in college, I went on to an exchange program to the US mm -hmm. oh. just to see if, to find out whether I like this environment more, more or I would like prefer to go to the US. So the funny thing is, 12 years old when I came back to Taiwan. Okay. It was my last year of elementary school. The teacher told me, I introduced me to the full class, right? Mm -hmm. And he told me to write my name onto the whiteboard. And I wrote down, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, whole class was started laughing. Okay. And from that point on, because I didn't know how to write my Chinese name. And from that point on, my nickname became Atoa. Oh. <laughs> my nickname became ABC. Yeah, yeah. And they would always tell me ABC, Gao Ga Di. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it was like a, a big flip for me. I grew up in the Taiwanese education system. Mm -hmm. And the Taiwanese education system for me is, it's very, very different from the American education system. Mm -hmm. Because when I was, six to twelve in the states we usually get off school very early yeah. three or four o'clock and you have time to do your stuff you have time to the homework was like 30 <laughs> minutes and we're done yeah. <laughs> and we have time to play we have time to you know ride bicycles yeah go to the backyard yeah. and then when i came back to taiwan so my mom enrolled me into he said we're gonna go to a cramp school after okay. school i was like that's fun <laughs> because in the states after school is like having fun with friends or yeah, chatting yeah, yeah. or usually doing a lot of cool things together mm -hmm. but no cram school is do your homework study and prepare for the next the test that was coming up that was a big transition for me I, yeah. for me it's very interesting like i don't know why actually you know when you're like 12 or like you know 12 16 years old in this group like age group the kids they have so much energy Mm. Like, you know, like when we were like kids, we we're like running, you know, from one place to another, like all the time, then like 8 p.m., go to sleep, that's it. In Taiwan, you are able actually to put kids and make them sit for like another four hours of their classes. This is just like, I mean, you know, yeah. you know, hands down, you know, that's, I think is really difficult. And like the Taiwanese discipline is very good. So, uh, yeah, you know, like when Taiwanese, they talk about their home food or like, you know, mama's cooking, they usually refer to Taiwanese food, but in your case, it must be way more complicated. In the US, it's more meat. Meat is much more cheaper in the US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was in college, we used to have like steak. Mm -hmm. Steak is just huge, thick and juicy steak. <laughs> oh, it's really, really good. And it was like $10 for this huge steak. But in Taiwan, if you go to the markets, yeah. like the, the like steak, they're all very cut up, cut up. Yeah, you have to share it with your family. <laughs> That's right. And if you want a big steak, it's very, very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, so I think steak is something I miss about the US. And I really, really enjoy like the Xiao Shi Wen Hua here. Okay. Because I live in Shiling mm -hmm. and it's just right next to the night market. Ah, oh, yeah. So basically the night market is my backyard. And it's just so easy to like snack on things. Because yeah. when you're hungry, you can go into the night market. You can get your favorite. Top, and you get your favorite yeah. so dofu. Yeah, and but there are like so many options actually. Yeah, yeah. And in the US, you have to like 
you have to go to the supermarket mm -hmm. or you have to like drive mm -hmm. to get to go to a drive through yeah, yeah yeah i think the convenience is something taiwan is very, way faster you know like what i remember from netherlands they have like a Turkish like uh, restaurant downstairs and I got like, like a Turkish like roll pizza thing mm. and but that was the only option basically you know otherwise I would have to go like for like five ten minutes mm. and it's like I have to drive or something so like so it's like if you want a snack you just go downstairs one option but yeah that, that's great but, like yeah. in Europe you like 90% options at night it's like, just kebab which is good comes in many varieties but it's not like in Taiwan you really can you know either choose like a midnight sushi or you know when, like, did, when did the restaurants close? First of all, like we sometimes don't open shops on Sundays, mm -hmm. which is like for Taiwanese, it like, sounds like disaster. Like, what do you mean? Like Saturday at 2 p.m. the mm. shop is closed and Sunday they don't even open. Mm. It mm. sounds like end of the world for Taiwanese. And the kebab shops, they, they run overnight. Like, you know, because they're basically you go to the downtown and around downtown you have, uh, you know, bars, pubs, nightclubs. Obviously, need to like cater people. Like people need to eat something when they're hungry. So the kebab shops are usually around there or McDonald's, and mm. that's basically two options you have at night. Oh, it's, that's <laughs> very very limited. I think my roots are really my values are deeply deep into the Taiwanese culture because mm -hmm. Asian values of really being close to the family, mm -hmm. trying to help the family out in the future, and I do think that cultural immersion is very important. Is you have to have have an international understanding of all these different things and although there's a lot of things in Taiwan that needs to be improved so that's why I think the younger generation has to try to come back to this really really amazing land mm. and help the people here and help the problems you see and one problem I saw was that the agricultural business was booming mm -hmm. and there was a lot of unique kinds of produce but also there was a lot of problems introducing it to these different people in the market. So I thought, okay, because of my business background, I can help these farms in Taiwan mm -hmm. to help promote their products yeah. and help to build these into things that the, our, our younger generation would like. So these are organic produce that we mm -hmm. produce at the farm and okay. it's called artichoke. In right. Taiwan it's called Cao Xian Ji. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is this has some really, really good things for the liver mm -hmm. and it helps to it helps to get all the like the dirty things out of yeah, your yeah. body. What we figured is that we can actually make these into really kind of cool, unique products mm -hmm. like tea and whatever, and yeah, just yeah. let the younger generation know more about these cool little things that look like armadillos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Taiwan, like uh, lots of people spend lots of money now to like import products from other countries, but you can actually grow it here, right? Where, where is it grown? We have a big organic farm in Nanto. If somebody we... wants to see that farm or order your products, how can I find it? Oh, they can actually, um, uh, below is our Instagram. And you okay. can also DM us our, our Instagram mm -hmm. and you can also web visit our website. Yeah. 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 Sure, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. 中天财经频道与您同行另外一个问题就是经济景气衰退的问题因此股票啦最实用的空间展示
每周三套中到站里店，猪猪哥聊聊车，陪你一起来直播，更别忘了帮我们按赞、点阅、分享，开启小铃铛哦。新总统级的顶级食材，秘制独家配方，以十多道严谨的工序，将严选的大干贝、珍珠包、石斑鱼、菲力肉酱，上快点购的网站来订购，就拥有五星级的食材，同时还有推荐代码 CTI 九九九，就能够享优惠，给大家总统级的享受。